let me explain this first. First of all, you've always supported me, Dev, in the lab since the beginning. You're like one of the first creators that like really supported with us. Uh, shoot. So I appreciate you. And secondly, Thanks, bro. I got one in the lab sock on right now. See? Not the, not the, not, not two, just one. No, just one. It's an exclusive. It's the one on one sure. pair right there. For sure. Um, you've always supported us. And at the end of this last event, you kind of were like, yo, like, let me hop on the podcast. Uh huh. And I've always wanted to create my own like show or slash segment on in the lab in our second channel. I was like, yo, this is like the perfect opportunity to finally do that. So this is That's actually all stemming just because of how kind of a person you are. Oh, bro, thank and you. Making you guys this happen. Awesome. So I appreciate you for doing that. Um, no I want to kick it back to the beginnings of this real quick first. I don't know if you remember this, but I feel like I was one of the original people who like discovered you before you blew up. And this is like when you were still digging the courts and building like way back in the day. Um, and we did the 2K tournament. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do remember that. This With is way before Julian Newman. Yep. Uh, um, Malik Newman. No. We what? had uh, uh, man. I don't even remember, but I think we may have had like Grayson Allen or uh, there's like two NBA guys in there. You played. I, I remember, remember like you set it up in like your backyard yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I think you lost like in the first round. So too. bad. I <laughs> you lost. Were by, so like, bad. I actually, you guys. I'm pretty sure you stopped the game early. Yeah. Because there was like a. You, at the beginning, they were like, there's this rule, uh, 24 or 21 skunk, blah, yeah. blah, probably won't happen to anybody. She got bodied. Killed, bro. <laughs> Don't even think we made it to the fourth quarter. And I think this was before COVID or during COVID? It but was it, during. But this was before you like really popped 2020, off. 2020, it was right after I graduated college. Yeah. I just moved down to Florida for a few months. We weren't like down there permanently yet, but I just moved back down there is when we were like building the court yeah we built the slide and we were doing all the like just random stuff so i'm but, one of my friends sent me your videos and he lives in boston shout out to Vinny. he was like yo you have wow. to check this guy out and i was like okay first video i watched and yeah. like immediately sent the devil like yo this guy is like sick and then you just kept like putting out more stuff building your court and we always said like you were going to be like legitimately me and dev always say you're going to be one of those guys because the stuff you were doing at that time was like, <laughs> and the stuff you're still doing now, yeah. I'm not trying to gas you, I'm just saying like the facts. No, I appreciate it's it. It's like, it's ahead of the time, but it's also like you paved a whole new way for creators mixing street ball culture. And you know you did it too. <laughs> you, know, I, yeah, you know you did it too. Because it's something that hasn't been done before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I always say like people, I think, who asked me this? Somebody asked me the other day, they were like, are you mad about people uploading basketball content that's like similar to what you're doing and I'm just honestly no because it's just I don't feel like anybody's taking stuff because I didn't do street ball first like it yeah. wasn't me yeah. you know I feel like I will take credit for finding um the right format like the format that does well yeah that works you know, on, I, on youtube but and social. that's yep. that's about it though but i i just, I just love this stuff bro. <laughs> I, we just like making good videos yeah. man that's the best thing about what you do because like you can tell like the passion love bleeds through in the videos how you are in person and it shows in the work and how you built your community thank you bro. um so before we dive in i got one more thing pierce cassie what's it like being a dad bro <laughs> <laughs> i'm always it's i always amazing, ask them this man. all the time i i just got like when I'm away, it's the hardest. Is, the hardest is when I'm away, and I travel a lot, yeah. so it's definitely difficult in terms of like not seeing them all the time. But it's amazing. I'm also super grateful for the amount that I travel because, like, we when we are together, it's like there's nothing that we want. There's nothing more that we want than to just be together. Yeah. Like, and then also Pierce. It's just wild that I have a, a baby boy, you know, like that I have a son and Cassie's literally the best. Like she's holding it down, bro. Yeah, I already know. I love how she posts it's, updates on like Instagram and the feed. I'm like, oh, this is yeah, so dope. She's, she's the best right now. I feel like she just understands like I wouldn't say not her time, but she's such a motivated person, like a very hardworking person. When I first met her she had two jobs and like she enjoyed getting up having that consistency having that schedule going to work yeah. doing this and doing that then when we got together and we moved out of the state like abruptly we actually went on a trip uh like around the end of co or not end of COVID, but around like early 2021 and then we ended up moving to florida like a week later we didn't have any intentions of moving 
And so that obviously took away some things that she was doing. And she finished her bachelor's and she just got her master's and then she's going to move on wow. to her doctorate. But like wow. I say, not her time. Like yeah. we know that I feel like sometime in the next few years, we're kind of going to switch places a little bit 100%. where she's going to be kind of going out and doing her thing. But no, she's holding it down. What's bro, her like, master's literally. and then doctorate in? She's psychology and stuff. And it, I know she wants to do she wants to have her own practices and and do basically like do her own thing too but she has talked about teaching um at the next level as well she has her bachelor's in um, neuroscience and then um her master's in psychology but it's a directed program where she kind of like got to choose different classes and courses to be be a part of but that's amazing yeah (laughs) she's killing it bro like (laughs) a lot of the stuff that i do is is never like overshadowing what she does because she's always working as well too. And right. Like, I'm, I'm just grateful for Cassie too. If you're watching this, <laughs> I'm gonna send it to her. <laughs> send how, it to how her. Do you, how would it. you describe being a father? Like, what is? Um, you know, everybody always says the cliche thing of like, oh, it's the best thing in the world, or like when it happens to you, you there's no other, there's no greater yeah. love. It's just hard to explain. It's one of those things that when you become a parent, I guess, and like I'm not this fucking guy that just knows everything about parenthood. I've been a dad for five months. So like when I became a father and I just had other responsibilities, like my outlook on life just changed a little bit because I just cared less about some things and cared more about Mm -hmm. others uh, and more other things, especially in my life, like with Pierce and with Kath and stuff. So, you know just just insane bro you're just happy like, I, i'm still in awe like the fact that it's a real thing i just got a picture that's why i grabbed my phone a second ago <laughs> she was like he just i'm sure every up. time he sends a picture or video it just like lights you up inside <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> cute chubby just cheeks. Chilling. um okay when i was thinking about like how to create a show or segment some people watching this may not even know who I am still because I'm still behind the scenes, which we're actually going to ask you about your team in a bit. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm Nav. And I run in the lab with Dev. We're business partners. We've been doing this for like almost six years now. Nav is that guy. <laughs> you know, a second ago, I would never talk myself up, right? And then I just have to sit here and take all these compliments and it's kind of awkward. And you just like, yeah, while well, they're saying so many good things and you don't want to be like, oh, no, I didn't do that. You just sit there and accept it. You know, you're thankful. This dude is that guy. You guys don't understand. There's so much behind the scenes that makes these things possible. And in this community, like maybe not community, because you guys are kind of doing your own thing, really. But in this um, industry, you have to be willing to accept that there's a face of the company. And then there's people that back the company. There's people that run the business behind the scenes. And like everyone has their own part. And in that a company that succeeds there's teams there's moving parts of that team and nav is a huge moving part to the in the lab team seriously you, bro like you. anytime i ever any have any questions when i'm a part of any of the events <laughs> he's the guy to go to Appreciate and he knows real. like he just gets shit together gets shit done for real you're og man you always support i appreciate uh-huh. that for it means sure, a lot to bro. hear from like people like in the space so thank you because mm-hmm. um, i know because grayson deals with the same stuff and yeah. i know how much get to he see has it first to do hand. yeah yeah for sure so as I was developing this, I was like, how do I make something that's really dope, that's informative and fun for the fans? It's fun for us to just sit and chill. Doesn't take too much time. And I came up with this concept. Actually, like, Ambika, and my wife came up with this concept. So like, I'm Guyanese Indian. Have you ever heard of the word called liming? Mm-mm. So like, there's a thing in, like, back home in Ghana where you say, like, y'all, like, we're just going to, we're just liming. Just we're, lime. just, we're just liming around. And basically just means like you're shooting the shit, you're just chilling. Just Lyman. So this is literally the first episode of Lyman with Nav. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So we, we're just chilling. We're going to talk about it. some stuff, uncover some some simple questions. Lyman and, with Nav. And the give Lyman. the fans maybe an insight into into who you are a little bit. Yeah, So for sure. I got three sections. I got the foundation. I got the journey and the championship. Super simple, super chill. Love and then it. we just banter. The first question I have for you is like, who is Devante Frigga? Like at the core of... Of you in, inside of this, one to two sentences, like, how, like who are you? Wow. That's a great question. I appreciate that. <laughs> I feel like I'm a loving, caring guy that truly is obsessed with making 
good videos. That's what everyone sees online. But who am I? I just, I would say... Uh, it's a thought-provoking question. Mm. <laughs> Introvert, extrovert. Yeah, both. <laughs> I love this making you think, I, bro. Yeah, I just bro, love like that you're such happy a good to question. think about this. I, I consider myself a very hardworking person. I'm really passionate about stuff. So if I had to say something in two sentences or so, I would say I'm a hardworking individual with passionate goals and um, just... That's good, bro. Yeah, you know, something like that. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. That's actually it's, good. It's weird, like, saying so, something about yourself. about yourself. I don't know, because yeah. I just, I don't know. You know, just like the same I like making good videos. Yeah. I like being around my friends. I like being with my people. I'm real family oriented. There you go. Yep. Um, so I guess instead of giving you two or three solid sentences, people can make what they want from the last <laughs> seven that I've given That's you. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, D3 Hooper. Yeah, I played at Division Three level. So it was a big part I, of your life. I didn't make the, my middle school basketball team. And then went on to high school, and I still felt like I still really loved the sport. All my friends were playing it at the time. And um, then I was averaging like nine turnovers a game my freshman year. It I sat like, the end like of the bench. Sounds like my cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> but like sophomore year, there was a clip, like something just, a switch turned on. Like I grew six inches over okay. the summer. I really wanted to be a better basketball player, so I just got in the gym every day. I was also in a very weird part of my life around that time, like weird relationships in high school, like they kind of just meant, mess yep. you up mentally. But <laughs> the gym was my therapy. <laughs> and no, I literally would just lock myself in the gym because I had nothing else that I wanted yep. to do, bro. And I just got better and then played at the college level. I didn't have any offers, really, and I went Division three for the development, really. Um, I wanted to play at the next level. I got to the next level and then freshman year, like I'm on JV at a D3 school. So it's like being D3 was bad enough as a freshman because in high school, you're like, ah, oh, D1 or die, yep. you know, D1 or nothing. Then you go D3 and you see how, you know, real that shit really is. And then, uh, you know, I'm on JV, like I said, at a D3 school and I'm kind of like, damn, all right, <laughs> this is bottom for me. Or I got to turn, you know, same shit that I did in high school, like, turn it around, get in the gym, did so, um, kind of got my chance at the end of the year, played division three basketball. And then, you know, fast forward a few years, um, my senior year ended up being a really vital piece to the team. First team, all league. Mm -hmm. We were fifth in the nation, um, uh, was scoring 15, 16 a game. But other than that, bro, we were just winning and it was like amazing. And that's when we started to really document the stuff. I'm so happy though that we recorded everything my senior year because we can go back and watch every everything. single game, mm -hmm. every game, whether we were traveling away or we were at home, like, and I had classes before, whatever. I'm just excited that like one day we had to watch that shit with Pierce, you know, I want to watch that we stuff with my son and be like, this is where it started. You know, this is then two years later, you know, played, did our first pay-per-view and then two years later yeah, after that played growing, NBA bro. champions and stuff and then what's two years from now, yeah. you know, that's the stuff that I'm thinking about. But yeah, that's a long no, I ass love, answer I love the whole that, D3 thing. So my question with the D3 stuff was obviously like I said, people always say, yo, D1 or die, then it's D2, okay, then you're, yeah. you're like two below it. Probably a lot of hate. There's probably like a, a lot of doubt in your mind or within your circle. Like how was just that experience of playing in a D3, like did that affect you at all? mentally or were you just like happy to be playing basketball at, at that level my senior year of high school it affected me to know that i was only going d3 right freshman year of college it affected me a little bit but then once you're there you're you're surrounded by all your friends like who are your new teammates you're living a good life on campus like going through what you would go through at any other division school and you're maintaining, like, staying in the gym, you're progressing your game. So I guess, like, it wasn't that it was distracting me, but I cared less when I was in, when right. I was a freshman. I cared less. Then sophomore year, I really started to elevate my game and, like, understand what my niche is on the court uh, or what I could give and offer to the team. So I just really didn't care at the time. 
And then also when you're in college and you're playing at the D3 level, you get the chance to do summer leagues against D2s and D1s and JUCOs. So yeah. you see the, you can see like the things that are, the similarities with some of the divisions. You can see the differences with the height and the athleticness. But I just think by the time I got to like senior year, I was, I don't know how to put this. When you go into a division three, you're going for development. When you leave Division Three, you've developed and you can play at other la- uh, other levels. Obviously, you don't have eligibility, so you can't legally go and play. But I think that you know you can compete with those D ones and those D twos. So, when you were finished at D three, do you felt like you could have played D one? Uh, like senior at, year, at yeah, senior year, for yeah. sure, for sure, for sure. But you were just done eligibility. Yeah. So same thing you just said. That's crazy. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, basketball has played like a huge role in your life. It's yeah. a little bit deep. <laughs> But how has it shaped you as a human? Um, I like it. I like that question, though, because I always go back to basketball, like being a part of a team, you know, going back to the whole thing with like Cassie and Pierce and like having a real family now. Mm -hmm. It was a weird transition for me uh, was like having a new immediate family. So basketball definitely helped shape that in a way of like being on a team and understanding my role on that team and like coming to it every single time every single I can, day. like yep. 100%. Um, but basketball has just shaped my life mentally in ways that, like, I could never repay it, the sport, yep. besides continuing to play it. And people that really have a sport that they love, they can understand that on a personal level with, like, you know, it's just it's just shaped who you are. Uh, the biggest one is just teaching me how to take an L. You know, that's so important, though. The biggest one, that. like if you play a sport and you've taken any loss before you're hurt, you know, it's like you you put so much time in to be good at something and you you put time in to win mm-hmm. and to compete and play at a high level. And then you get to the spot and you, you know, you're on a big platform or whatever and you just lose. And it's like, what am I going to do? to help like build my character after this instead of just it being a loss. They always say like, it's not a loss, it's a lesson, you know, and that's kind of like what sports has helped with my life specifically. Um, then also, they don't talk about this, it might teach you how to take a win or teach you how to take a loss, but it also teaches you how to take a win. You know, like how do I, again, build my character from this win? Yeah. How do I take this W and like, continue to be humble with it and get better you know yeah it's always about continual improvement right I would yeah exactly I always say like do the same thing you do after a loss after a win you know like mm-hmm. after you lose do the same shit that you would do after you win after yep. you win do the that's same the shit best you way to build to, to stay consistent and keep building mm-hmm. yep um you just kind of mentioned it before this so we, you know we did you know you had your Mount Union then Creator Classic came. Then you played Brandon Rush. Mm-hmm. And we don't know what's good. so much. You have so much stuff you're also doing outside yeah. of our events. Yeah. But then next five years, who knows where it's taking us? So how are you continually improving your game? Because you're you're hooping a lot. Like, are you Bro, still training? Yeah. I mean, not like I'm not like training like like maybe you see like dev training yeah. and stuff, you know. <laughs> but I'm definitely in the gym a lot. Uh, but. You know, like, the biggest thing, bro, is literally, like, having a good team behind you. Because if I had to juggle everything myself, nah. I, well, you wouldn't be able to get better, you know? It'd be a wrap. So, like, just everybody on the team um, pushing everybody. You know, right now we're filming so much stuff on the second channel where we're, we're able to release every day. Yeah, just crazy. And yeah. we're just in the gym, just always hooping. I'm so just beyond grateful that (laughs) basketball is like my job you would say because i'm constantly have to progress my game like if i just stayed stagnant then i feel like it would be boring after a little bit and now like even if i post a 1v1 like we posted one yesterday and then we did the one obviously where it's brandon like you can see progression in games even with um like just smaller 1v1s you know i don't know always continually progressing though for sure when you played Brandon Rush and you did the wave, did it hurt when you missed? Because it hurt me when you missed it. it it's like, 
I missed. Okay, so I, the one versus Mario hurt the worst because <laughs> I ended up losing by one yeah, point yeah, technically. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so it's like <laughs> we won't bring that up. But <laughs> then I'm like, Marcel's comes up to me after or before the Brandon Rush game. He's like, "Are you gonna do the bye bye wave?" I'm like course i'm gonna do it like he's six eight he's gonna want to block my yeah, shot i know what's it. coming i'm going to the hole as hard as i can hard drive right up fake then i wave at him and he just he's a really good defender even if he's not moving yeah. like he was when he's 25 he's still like i said six eight long he can block a shot contest a shot played great defense on me a few times um, when he actually played i guess just letting me yep. shoot it a little bit but the the wave hurt <laughs> the waiver i want to get that's the i want to get one wanted. of them with that I, I don't know if you guys add footage in these or not but right after i did the wave to brandon i like turned and looked at mario because he was <laughs> laughing when i did it and i like pointed, pointed at him and i'm like yeah <laughs> i love that's that what, what was the the turning point for you when you realized that you could like be a youtuber like a creator full-time in college for okay. sure so during your senior season Okay, there was a there was a part for sure. I think okay, I gr my last video in college, my senior year, I uploaded. I was at one hundred and six thousand subscribers, and I was like, one hundred and six. Like it's dope. Hundred hundred thousand subscribers for sure. And then we have like I had two videographers who were my best friends. Yeah. Three technically, but Grayson was still in school. But Joe and Logan. Yep. You remember Joe and Throwback, Logan? Yeah. They were filming in their full time. It's like 100K subscribers. You can do a lot with it, but the way we wanted to film it, it was just hard to create that. So I definitely had this like thought in my head, like how are we going to do this with 100,000 subscribers? Because I, I had just, like I said, just graduated. And we ended up posting a park video and it did like a million something and five days was that the first one that blew up it was the first one that ever blew up yeah. and like kenny chow reacted to it and he was like one of the first people to react to it big shout out to kenny wow kenny reacted to it because it saw he saw it and it came up and yeah. then chris lsk reacted to it like chris london yeah that's few, huge. few guys reacted to it and then i was like screw it like we got to post another one so we posted another park video not thinking anything of yeah. it like it wasn't like we had this intention of just posting park videos but the one did good and then the other one did good and then the other one did good going, and then yeah. we were like okay we might be able to do this and we went from 106,000 subscribers to like 250 something in seven days that's crazy bro so then we were like we might that's have insane. something we can do with this so you know we grow 100 plus thousand subscribers in a week we're like we're just gonna kind of run with this mm -hmm. and see what comes from it and then we just started posting park videos for a year straight and they were blowing up at the they time. They were all blowing up. They were I remember all that over, time. man. Like 700,000 views in a day sometimes. And we were just like, let's, let's make the best ones that we can possibly make. We just had to put our own spin on it, really. Was there anything that inspired you? Casey Neistat. Oh, shout out to Casey. Casey yeah. Neistat. Well, what was Never it, though? Like, the way um, his storytelling, bro. That's yeah. who I was watching really in college. Uh, and at first, like, I didn't start the YouTube channel to post basketball videos. It was to do a daily vlog of my life in college. And I posted one video in college with the title D3 in it, like yeah. day in the life of a D3 Hooper. Yep. It got like 14,000 views and I'm like, what the fuck, this is crazy. Like people care about division three life. And I'm like, it clicked for me. There's nobody out there Doing in that. the entire world yeah. or anywhere in the United States, however you want to put it, that's documenting their life at a low division college Mm -hmm. and showing like that it's real you know so posted another one and kind of just kept doing that but yeah you know Spe speaking of like the team and i kind of touched on this earlier i'm i'm a big bts guy behind the scenes like you said that there's there's a face yeah. of the brand and there's gonna be multiple people people in different pillars and foundations exactly. behind the scenes right so the last like couple years i've been a big on trying to like put our team on more like really like showing who's doing stuff like not just me like got Calvin mm -hmm. you got Andrew you got all these people doing stuff that no one's ever going to know about but they also like want that little shine or just that yeah. recognition right it's, it's yeah. important what's your team look like right now that's the first part of this well we don't we actually don't have like a very big team <laughs> you, um, kinda, you guys are like us kind of 
yeah. very like bootstrap still. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I, I know a lot of people don't work with management companies or anything. And, and there's a lot of like, um, opinions on management companies and shit. And I agree. Like I, I'm the same way. I'm a big uh, fan of how like Russ runs his, um, his own platform where he's like mix master produce his own stuff, right, his label. do yeah. your own thing. Like, and I know you guys are the same way yep. too. I think that since we are such a small team, um, considering the fact that Patrick was just put on the team two weeks ago, I'm just going to say this for now. Like it's literally been me and Grayson and Cassie helps a lot with the second channel stuff too, right. with helping like with matchups, organization, scheduling, um, literally just like I, I don't want to feel wrong for saying this but no. right now it's literally was just me and Grayson as of like two weeks ago Patrick has helped with the editing and immensely like I know that we're picking up uh, but the team like the team's everything bro that's so important Your team is everything because I wouldn't be able to progress my game which would make videos better um i'm not as organized or neat and like care about things as much as grayson does and right. grayson keeps things in check he does all of the communication which helps so much right now with having pierce like at the house and like i want to spend my time doing what i want to um Patrick's taking on the editing role because I've been editing for the last five years. Like all of the videos you see on my main channel, I edited. By you. Grayson filmed yep. or yeah. Joe and Logan filmed and I edited. When Joe and Logan were on the team, it was just me, Joe and Logan and that's it. Um, Sean is a big shout out to Sean as well. He was doing the full-time security and driving for us, but we no longer are on tour and um, he's doing stuff with my dad now. But our team is three, four people. And obviously, like, we have people that hoop and stuff, and we take care of their channels. But, you know, I, it's not a big team, but the team is everything. Literally, like, huge shout out to Grayson, Patrick, everybody that's a part of the team that makes this shit possible. They're allowing you to grow to that next, that next mm -hmm. level, essentially. Jordan, Scar, Cam, yeah, like, all, all the stuff. hoopers. Yeah, it, literally. Everybody that is a part of the team is the biggest reason. Like, I, like we just mentioned there has to be a face it's just like a brand like yep. nike is its own face you know but there's millions there's hundreds of thousands of people that work underneath of this corporation to keep it going and keep it flowing so and the reason all I, credit to the team yeah and the reason i asked you that is because a lot of people think that we have like for example they think in the labs like, has a massive team mm -hmm. they think we just have people all over the world paying them to do all kind of stuff but it's not it's like it's like me and dev and it's just like how you said mm -hmm. we got calvin yeah, we have a designer, which you guys may not have. You guys are doing that, but it's like small. Like it's five, six. It At is, one yeah. point, we actually tried to expand. We did like 14, 15, almost 20. And we just realized like, man, like it's actually better to just stay tight knit and close because everyone's doing what we need them to do. And there's no overlap and it just flows yeah. nicely. Yeah. Especially for like the kind of businesses that we have. Right? Mm -hmm. It's still like all of content focused and content heavy. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I also like the small team aspect for like you can continue to grow it as a very close knit, like it's hard with 20 people. It really is because there's so many just Moving pieces, different yeah. personalities. Ideas, exactly. Yeah. Um, it works very well with a few people. We get on it. Like yesterday, we, me and Grayson, we were arguing at the gym <laughs> yesterday. Cause he's like, we have shit to do. Like, we got to go, we got to do this. And like, I it makes that, it, <laughs> he was like, you need some, he was like, you need some fucking sense of urgency. Like get your stuff. We have yeah, to go. We have a phone call. I was like, all right. I dabbed him up after. And then I went up to Patrick cause yeah. Patrick's two weeks in and I went up to him in the gas station yesterday. And I'm like, listen, if we don't get into it, like me and Grayson just did, just know that this won't work out. Because like we, 20 minutes later we dapped up. I was like, good shit. Like I appreciate you doing that. It might be in the moment that I'm at the gym and I'm hooping and with yeah. no urgency. Yeah. But like, if there's not a person like Grayson to be like, yo, this is what we're doing. Like we got to go. Like get yeah. this shit done. Then it won't work. You know. It's healthy. Like me and Dev have arguments and stuff all the time. Yeah. Like you can't grow if you guys yeah. aren't arguing and no one's playing devil's advocate. It's just like the same exactly. stuff just gonna keep happening. Exactly. That's why. So. Like, I don't know. I. I <laughs> That's why I like getting into arguments and shit because that's why we are like a brotherhood. 
because I do the same shit with my brothers, especially when I was growing up. Yep. You know, me and my older brother, Isaac, me and my younger brothers, Dante and Pepe. And, like, shit's real. <laughs> no, for real. It is. Um, Hold each other accountable. On a, on a weekly basis, if you can answer this, great. Because every creator is different. Some people just do shit off the cuff. Some people have no plan, no idea what's happening. What are you like when it comes to content creation? Let's say like next week you're going to film stuff. Are you guys pre-planning stuff? Is it more we're just going to pull up and knock it out? Or you guys have a plan like here's the concept, here's the potential title, thumbnails. Like we know what we want to execute. I think right now, it, that's actually funny that you're asking that right now because we're actually like going through our transition of working on things like that have a possibility of grabbing more attention as opposed to like putting more out right for our community so like in layman's terms like bigger we're looking to try and get things to touch like 20 million views yep on the second channel we do want to keep our community um keep our base like we have our hundred thousand plus people that are supporting us every day because we're posting daily so mm -hmm. we know at least a hundred thousand people are going to tune in every single day on our second channel and we love that we love having our community because we're just close with them like there's 500 comments within the hour and people are like love and your engagement's always well, insane i just love it because it's not it's also like not just me you know now too and um yeah, I don't know. But like I said, we're going through a transition right now where we would just show up to a park and just something's going to, something viral is going to happen. happen. We're yeah. going to stay there for three hours. We're going to film basketball content. Someone's going to fall. Someone's going to get dunked on. Someone's going to talk shit. Yeah. And boom, we have a video. And that's, it's simple, right? It worked. But I, I'm done with that, bro. I am. I'm done with that. I want to create videos that, like, we're still going to hoop at the park, but I want to do something like next level. And I have big kudos to Patrick because, like, two weeks ago, told him this, and we've completely changed it in two weeks. Like, the style of the videos, well, the, the ideas, one, yeah. the everything one I about saw, it, like, I love that. that it's completely different. Yep. Completely different. We did a video the other day where we did do a park video at Venice, but instead of being, like, first time hooping at Venice, we did... Um, I was wearing an earpiece and Chris White was telling me what to say and how to play the whole time. Like, he controlled me for the whole <laughs> like video. That. Yeah. It'll be a short video. Short form content is unreal right it's now. It's killing it's right now. completely yeah. going to, like, nobody's ever going to post a 20-minute, 30-minute video in, within the next, like, three or four years, yep. I don't think. But, shoot, I don't know, man. Right now, our, our, our schedule goes like this. Like, let's come up with the best ideas possible. If you think of it, let's put it let's in the group chat. We'll yep. put it in our notes, and we'll hit it when we can, really. Do you guys have a crazy amount of ideas right now just we like have backlog? we have quite a few ideas okay. yeah for sure some big stuff and yeah i mean there's some stuff on there Sick. that we want to do for sure like we want to do the 5v5 with like five santas versus yeah i think hood. that's a great idea um like we had the basketball but someone controls me 1v1 loser skydives um just like that's trying enough. like next level stuff that's keep a great idea short, the keep them high engaged yeah. And just try and push it out there. And then the second channel, we can still continue to do those things. Yeah, you people can still experiment. In community. Community. Exactly. Um, I love the 1v1 skydive. Yeah. That's <laughs> actually, bro, that's Grayson, a nasty idea. How long have we been trying to film that? Two months? Right. Now we got to film that before you post this now. Please, <laughs> please go film it like it. today. No, nah, we're going to wait on this to release this. But, oh, man, that's epic. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll, we'll go into the journey a little bit here. First question could be hard hitting uh, or not. What's the hardest part about being a content creator? Mm. And there could be multiple things. Your mental stability, bro. I am huge on like, you know, the stay motivated, stay positive because I truly believe that. And I think I randomly just said it at the one, one of the end of one of my last videos in college or something. But um, your mental, man, because this is, takes a fucking toll on you, bro. Like social media will paint a picture in your head of who you should be or who you shouldn't be. You compare yourself to everybody. You don't look after your own health sometimes. You're only worried about the best video. You're only worried about money sometimes. Like, it's real shit. It's a, it's, you have to stay away from it turning into a job. You know, that's what I would say. If you want to get into social media, 
stay away from it turning into a job. Keep it as something um, that like, you know, and obviously this is just, this is all opinion based, but hardest thing for me has just been my mental. Um, m I've been real strong minded my whole life on like, I don't have like, you know, I'm that guy who's like, oh yeah, I don't have anything, no mental problem, no anxiety, none of that. But that shit can form over time. And I think um, being around large crowds with the park videos, mm -hmm. not knowing anybody there, like always having to watch my back, having to have security was weird for me at one time. Um, so like, not that I'm just like this big ass name like Logan Paul or some shit, but like some sort of PTSD had a, had to have formed from some of the large crowds and shit for sure. That's been the hardest thing to deal with. That's crazy to think about that. At, it's, yeah. It, that it's got to that point to where it's affecting you. Yeah. Um, what about creator, creator burnout? Creator burnout's a for sure thing. Like, bro. so you've ex experienced it? Like, has there been times where you're just like, yo, I can't, yeah. I can't go anymore? Bro, I've been saying for the last month, like, I'm so burnt out from editing. I'm so burnt yeah. out. I don't even want to put a clip together. Like, if somebody has a crazy ass, like, ankle breaker, I'm just like, damn, like, that's raw. I would love to post that. But I'm not going to go on my computer and clip it up. I will, like, if I have to edit it. But yeah. I got burnt out from editing, like, and I'm also, like, I'm not, I got good at it over the years, yeah, but did. I'm not the best at it. And there's always somebody that can do it better mm -hmm. than you. There's always somebody, right? But, yeah, I've experienced it for sure. So, creative burnout's a real thing. It's man. a real thing. And people, like, don't talk about it. And I've seen, even with Dev, like, I've seen it firsthand. That's why I'm asking mm -hmm. you, right? Like, I've seen how it can affect you. On the mental side of things, we don't have to go too deep, but... Like, what, what did you do to, to, get, um, to get over it or, or get through that? Well, I try to just, like, just take just step away for a second. Take like, things back. don't... When you're an artist and you feel like maybe you're at, like, top of your game or, like, you're putting stuff out that's really good, whether, whether you're a true artist, like, painter or whatever, or you're a, a music artist or you're an artist on YouTube or something, you're, like... You're so judgmental of your own work and you think of things in a way that you might think other people are looking at your work the same way. But it's okay to take a month away, two months away. Yeah. People are always going to come back if you're truly a good artist. And that's the hump that I fight. Like to this day, I fight that, you know, I don't want like, to, I'm, that break. I was so worried for a while about, and you can ask Grace and you can attest on this, but like, um, the whole picture of like, God, how do I put this? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, am I going to go away? Grace is patiently like, waiting for you to say this. What's, what's the word I kept saying for the last few weeks or months or whatever? Like, am I going to go away? Um, uh, your relevancy. Re oh, staying artists, relevant on social. Yeah, yeah, artists and like social media creators. It's like a battle with like, man, like how do I maintain relevancy? And it's not that you are, like, I'm not trying to compete with anybody. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to compete with anybody, bro. I just want to put the best stuff out that we can put out. Yep. But you start to, like, compete with your own mind on relevancy. So it's that's a hard been, thing to think about. Because, yeah, like, for sure. if you take two months off, you could, you could create it like you could probably be fine and come back and just knock out some dope videos. But like you said, that still could mess with you so much. Because, mm -hmm. again, I've experienced that with Dev. It's like, yo, like, should we take like three months off and mm -hmm. just not do anything? Then it's like you got to stay consistent on Instagram or TikTok. Does everything go off? Because it's yeah. not just YouTube. It's like all the socials. That's the thing, bro. You want like, to add something? Yeah, you're always saying, which I haven't heard you say, but you don't innovate and die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Businesses that's, that don't innovate die. Yeah. I always say that. I've been be saying that for. That's why we've, bro, we've, I feel like we've consistently changed it up like almost mm -hmm. every year. You know, college videos to then the park videos for like two years. And then we're starting to do, you know, more, I guess like less videos throughout the month, make them better. And then it started to become like the second channel focus of building other people's brands as well. Um, I don't know. Where, where'd that idea come up to build J. Lou and build all these other guys' brands and take that on um, know, under, your, under your brands or your business? Honestly, we did a video one time in Fort Myers and Jordan was there 
and um, he was, you know, he's, he's Jordan. He's just shifty. shifty he's people. doing shit that, like, yeah. people i just never seen before. Just his playing style is just unreal. Like, I've never seen somebody play basketball like that in my life. It doesn't look like you're playing basketball, yeah. but then you watch it, and it's like, oh, shit, like, what? I don't know. What am I watching? Then I brought my friend Nathan uh, from school. Like, a lot of people look at him as this really, really good basketball player on my page specifically. Yeah. Jordan was killing me and him, I think. I don't know if he was killing me. Were you killing Nathan that day or no? No, I wasn't you. Oh, it was just me. Okay. <laughs> that was good, bro. It was just, just, just him. <laughs> He's like, Nathan, I wasn't talking shit, no. <laughs> um, and I don't know, like, it literally just, I thought in my head, I think that day I invited him to go play with us in Tampa. Yeah. Because I was like, bro, it would just be, like, raw if we brought this type of, um, like, hooper on the on the page and see what see see what people say and we posted a clip of him on instagram and he got like two million views in a day that was your first viral clip and yeah. dude went from like two i swear on everything in five days he went from two thousand followers to seventeen thousand from one video it's crazy bro. from two thousand followers to seventeen thousand we we're like well we can't do nothing with this yeah. So then we just started posting a whole bunch more and sending him stuff to post. And at the time, he's just like, I don't know what to post. So we just <laughs> kept sending him clips. And we were posting stuff too. And then it went from 17K to 30K. And then people asked, like, my thing was when I, then I posted a video and he wasn't in it. And people were like, where is he at? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, shit, that's like a the tell-all. Yeah, that's yeah. the tell-all is like, because a lot of people that are consuming this basketball content online are consuming Ball's Life, are consuming these people like yeah. Savage Squad, are consuming content from people that have teams. And we're just going around in the park and it's just me just hooping, you know, doing yeah. some viral shit. And then they started to ask, where's Jordan? And it's, a, and it's not like it's a problem that they're um, like, that he's not in the videos. It was a problem that, I'm sorry, I think I reworded that. It was a problem that he wasn't in the videos because people were asking where is he at, which I thought was a really good thing, mm -hmm. like people wanting to see more of him. And we were like, there's no way that we can just upload content, and like always have all of us hooping together. There's got to be another outlet for him because he's just... The way he hoops is yeah, just it's different. His, his own, it his can't own, be only seen his own style, yeah. on a 5v5 park video twice a month on my page with yeah. my name, you know? Like, he can do this himself, too. We kind of just over-explained it to him, and he really believed it, believed in himself. That's just who he is, his character, and how he is as a basketball player. Always pushed us in the gym for the last few months, and, like, we're like, let's start your page. Um, it's such a process. Like when we're trying to still grow my main I know. channel, and now you're adding growing the second channel. We did the same thing, not just with Jordan, but with yep. Cam and with Scar, Scar as well. Yep. Um, it's very difficult. So when you when you go back to like, you included the part in the question at the end of the question. You said and taking that on. That's been the part that has like we had no idea how hard <laughs> that was going to be because at first we're like, okay, let's upload you know, four to eight videos a month or whatever. And then we're like, all right, let's upload four. And then we're still trying to grow and post these videos on my channel, yeah. which obviously we have to prioritize. And like, I've made that clear and shit and they know that and like they can, obviously they're doing their own thing. Like Jordan literally is a fucking bucket. He can go do anything, <laughs> you know, run, like yeah. literally go film anything. And I think that's just been the hardest part is cause like when we uploaded the first few videos, they're all of this like production quality. So that's just where we're at with it. But you know, we've, I, we've made it a thing where um, people are always expecting content now, I think from them, which makes it feel like it won't go away until we do dial down on the perfect system for yeah, everybody. To make it all like the work, that workflow to make it all flow nicely. Yeah, for sure. It's exciting though, but like I said, for you guys to take that on and to elevate other creators and other hoopers like that's a huge thing it's really fun for us though too because like we went to school and we got our integrated media degrees so yeah. we are obsessed with the production mm -hmm. like when we go out to tennessee and we film for scar we like really take that shit seriously 
like for real we have like production calls and we have times that we have places we need to be well grace it takes us no i'm just kidding <laughs> but that's, that um, shows, no, but right? that shows right that shows in the videos we too. really do though yeah. i mean like we know what we want the videos to look like now before they're up besides the actual gameplay because we can't control that and then the same thing like with jordan like yesterday we're like oh shit this would be raw if like shiftiest player on the internet goes into dev in the lab facility yeah. and it's hooping with him you know so like that's gonna yeah. live amazing on his channel i can't wait to see that one bro that's gonna be exciting yeah. um we talked about a lot of different things a lot of highs yeah throughout all this stuff what's dick what's been like the biggest like downfall or the biggest pit for you the Just, biggest pit i think is just the time, bro. This stuff takes a lot of time. And I wouldn't say, like, takes a lot of time away from me because I am in control of it. But it takes a lot of time because we want to perfect things and we want them to look a certain way. Um, and we're always, like, we are constantly filming for the next month. And then there's always, every day, every day there's something to edit. Every single yep. day there's something. A lot of content, a lot of footage. Done. So it makes it very hard to be the best man for Cassie. It makes it very hard to be the best father. It makes it very hard mm -hmm. to be the best friend I can be for him. Yep. And for them, it makes it hard to do these things that you're so used to doing. Um but I don't know, man. Adversity is a good thing. Like, adversity is good. So Please. I don't think there's any, like, downfall or anything too bad I can say besides, like, I wish there was two of me. Yeah, you just <laughs> you wish there was more time in the day, too. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people don't understand, like, as entrepreneurs, because that's what you are. You know, I'm not going to call you just a creator. Cause you do I a appreciate it. I know you do a lot of other stuff, too. For sure. It's, like, it's hard. And, like, you do sometimes have to have, like, work 12, 18-hour days. Like, you guys, I know, have, have your grind sessions where you're just knocking shit out. Yeah. And that's the stuff that no one sees because all they want to see is you. They just want no, you, you to yeah. put a video out because they don't care. As long as he drops a video, like, they're happy, but they're not seeing, like, that grind or, like, your mental yeah. state. Like you said, like, a lot of people, like, hopefully when they see this, they would connect the dots, but, like, you're a father. Yeah. You know, and I see this with Dev all the time. It's, like, it takes so much of your time. And, like, I know you and Dev are, like, very similar. Like, you want to be home yeah. with Pierce and Sky, And, like, you want to have that time. But, like, mm -hmm. you also have to prioritize the grind because you have a family to take care of. Yeah. And then it's your career. And it's, like, everything you're building. It's your personal brand. Mm -hmm. So, it's, like, you're always going to play a balancing act. For sure. Which is, like, For fun. Sure. But also, it's, like, kind of fucked up at some mm -hmm. times. You know? No. You're, yeah, you're 100% <laughs> right. Like, I literally couldn't have said it any better than that. You're 100% right. It is a little fucked up for sure. Um, a lot of people... A lot of people look up to you, me included. Um, what are some like tips and insights you can give to anyone that's trying to not be the next Devontae Vega because that's so cliche, but just coming up in this creator role, they're in the basketball space. Like, what would you tell them? Um, make sure you love it. Like, if you really want to do this, um, not even just creating basketball stuff online. If you want to be anything love it bro love it because you'll never have to question doing something if it needs to get done you'll just do it you'll never have to question your love for like oh you never have to question what you're doing you'll never have to question your love for it you'll never have to you just never worried about what you're doing like i don't it's hard to explain it man if you're really in love with it and you're really passionate about it go for it. If you're questioning it, it's cool to try it out. Try it out, yeah. you know, like I try a million things out, especially in the creator space. See what works for you. See what you like. See what your, your niche could be online. But any advice I can give is like, just slow down and make sure you're real passionate about it. I'm going to add to that a little bit just because we're on the In The Lab second channel right now. Mm -hmm. Me and Dev always say like we're like mad scientists and you guys just said innovate or die. So for us, it's like we're never afraid. And we've made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. I know you guys make your mistakes too. There has to be some. But like we always say, like, don't be afraid to experiment, hypothesize, test shit out, and then see what works and then build it from there. Because mm -hmm. if you don't try it, you're just never going to know that someone else is going to do it and kill it and you're going to hit yourself on the head later. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hundred percent, bro. So we're gonna switch to socials just a little bit because yeah. I wanna, just want to see how your mind works on the social media platforms. How do you conquer YouTube? You'd be different than other people. If somebody has seen, if so, like you got me like <laughs> nerding know, it out now. <laughs> He's like this. Um, he, he got up so fast. <laughs> yeah, bro. If somebody has seen it before, or if there's a place that they go to consume a certain style of content, don't completely mimic it. Um, you can add your own spin on things, but like to conquer YouTube, create very, very, very good videos and always like come through for the audience. Even if it's not your audience specifically, like if you know that the video is going to be pushed out there to people that may not have seen your videos, make it a good fucking video because they might stay for more. Yeah. You know, they might look forward to more after that. Um, conquering it though is being the niche, being different. What can you do to differentiate yourself from the crowd? How can you give people to give a fuck about what you're doing instead of what the next person's doing? And again, it's not, it doesn't have to be a competition thing, but if you're trying to conquer and trying to grow an audience online, that's how you do it. You got to be different. You got to do something that people can like attach themselves to that they like, that they need to yep. see more of what's next. You know, I love that. Um, Sticking with YouTube for a second, what is like top, whatever it is, top three, top five things that are most important to you when you're posting a YouTube video? Title, thumbs, like what are you, what are you doing to try to optimize that? Um, the story is the biggest one to yep. me. Like there has to be a story to it. What am I watching for? Even if it's just like going to the park or something, like tell the story a little bit and then get into it, break it down the video, whatever. The story is absolutely the biggest part to me. Um, the title is huge. Titles are so hard in this space specifically. Um, but like I said, now that we're trying to get onto new stuff, the title is the biggest part. Yep. And the thumbnail is obviously huge too, because you need people to click on it. Like if you, if you saw something and it looked enticing on YouTube and had a good title and had a good thumbnail, and a good story, you're gonna click. you would click on it too. It's the same reason you clicked on the last YouTube video that you clicked on. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it's the same reason you clicked on Facts. it. Facts. Uh, higher level, are you doing stuff with uh, like keywords or are you doing stuff with like s testing thumbnails? Like, will you guys just put it up and be like, this, this worked, that's good? Or will you guys be like, yo, this thumb didn't do as good as last, so we're gonna switch the thumbnail out and t test a new one? Yeah, bro, like, We've been working on the thumbnail for this last one for three days because, <laughs> um, and then like we did the prison video and which was dope by the way. We, thank you. Yeah, we <laughs> had concepted that idea for four days. Um, then then like we would do a full thumbnail um, for uh, we did like a park run with a college team and we did it probably took us like four or five thumbnails until we were like you were happy with nah, that. Yeah, yeah. But we, yeah, we are testing it out for sure. Um, we'll like dive into the analytics. Like, okay, these were these keywords uh, worked very well in this title. Yep. Um, okay, maybe this one was four years ago though, and there's other content out now that have that title, and it might not make sense now. Um, but yeah, I mean, keywords, anything that can make people feel like. Like they can only get the answer through the video. Um, yeah. yeah I don't know. One more thing on the, on the analytics side, because you're obviously getting glo views globally. Yeah. I would assume probably US is probably like your top, but like, do you know what's next? Like, is there a country that you're like surprised that's um, watching all your stuff? I mean, Australia, we have a big audience out there Sweet. for okay. sure. Um, what do you think? UK? Philippines is huge. Philippines as well. is huge. It's, yeah, I mean the love hoops, man. Uh huh. Um, there's an audience like everywhere. It's so crazy that it's global. Like it's I cannot <laughs> wait to go to these places it's, and it, play. That's gonna change stuff up. For I you. can't wait. Yeah, that'll. That's what I yeah. think it's gonna take it from like that 700k to like three million, it's, possibly. It's gonna pass it for sure. Um, but we want to get onto you know the international and global space this upcoming year. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, I know those, there's some countries out there that we definitely got to go to, um, for sure. Okay, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, algorithm is, I don't even want to talk about the algorithm, because like every day is something, will hit something, won't hit, that's fine. 
what are you doing on Instagram and TikTok? Like, what can you just tell? Because I know people are going to be watching this. Like, what are your tips, um, tricks? Truthfully, like, I just need to get better on there myself. Um, I think that the real short form content that's going to start working now, though, is like little videos mm -hmm. instead of just clips. Like, clips don't perform for the algorithm. Clips perform for your community. But videos perform for an audience and not a community. So if we're doing like, like let's say we take that prison video, what we need to post on YouTube shorts or Instagram is like the intro from it and then some of the highlights from it and it's very short, sweet and done. Yep. Uh, that's what I would do on Instagram and TikTok or with shorts or whatever if you're watching. But shorts is the next wave for sure. That's the next one. I'm just but waiting for them to monetize. On Instagram, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. When it's officially monetized. That's going to be wild for sure. <laughs> January or so, right? I think, yeah, I think January, Feb, yeah. Um, Instagram, though, I, Instagram's real, um, like, personal. I feel like it's, like, the most personal one. It is, yep. Uh, every time anyone's ever in our videos, like, we throw up their Instagram. Just casually whatever unless they ask for like twitter or something but instagram super personal i feel like you could kind of post anything on there it just it, it really depends on what you're trying to grow um what's the priority for you youtube yeah youtube is the priority for right. sure um instagram and youtube yeah. really here's how like i see it tell I, me tell me what you think like youtube is like the end all be all right now that's like the main yeah. thing to build out because it's it's going to be the biggest video platform instagram is personal like you said you connect with your fans and community and then tiktok is like the discovery tool because yeah. on tiktok you're going to get people who've never heard of you or seen you before and they're going to find you on tiktok yeah. and obviously the goal is you'd bring them back to youtube yeah is that how you see tiktok or you see it in no a i agree way? yeah okay. i agree i agree and twitter agree. you don't really mess with right are you on twitter no i mean i was i was you on like twitter got for deleted a, for a while or yeah something. i got deleted and i was <laughs> like fuck, you know, fuck twitter twitter's Twitter's a good one, though. Twitter's fun, bro. What do you think about, like, Twitter? Because, like, you know, Elon took it over, and he wants to he wants to have it compete with YouTube, hopefully. He wants to bring, like, huge monetization, more money for creators, long-form, short-form videos. If it was enticing enough, like, what would you, what would you do? Like, On if they, Twitter? Yeah, if they start offering more pay. I and, would do, like, most of the uncensored stuff on there, just because I know, like, Twitter's, like, so I would, yeah. I would post like the stuff <laughs> instead of like bleeping out some of the stuff when people are like, get you the just fuck keep off it the there. court. Yep. I think I, we could do something like that for sure. Um, but no, on Twitter, I, I would really just really probably just do most of the same stuff on Twitter that I would on TikTok, um, just with more of like asking people to be engaged. So instead of on TikTok doing so with like comments and stuff on Twitter, I would do that because I feel like Twitter's like, Twitter and TikTok are the place people go to not just look at the content, but look at the comments it's as all well. all about the comments you know? and the beef and the yeah all the nonsense, especially exactly. Twitter. But it's hilarious, though. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all... <laughs> Sometimes I just opinion. find myself going through Dev's comments on Twitter and, <laughs> and just seeing what people are saying because it's hilarious stuff. Uh -huh. uh, okay, it's the last section. Championship stuff. I only have one question, but I have three questions before we go into the championship. And they're just like fun, fun ones. Okay. What's your all-time starting five? NBA. NBA? Yep. Well, I... Huh. It's a curveball coming at you. Bro. Yeah, it really is because yeah. I'm not like... We're talking about all kind of other stuff. Right. I'm not... <laughs> I, I honestly don't really follow the NBA too much. I don't really watch the NBA. Okay. Um, like, I'm going to throw LeBron in there. I'm from Akron. That's fair. Like he's from Akron. He's, boy, he's yeah. my goat, you yep. know. Uh, I, um, I. It's so tough because, like, I would love to say some of the older players, like, know, who? like, so, like Oscar Robertson at at the point at point guard. Form, okay, you know what I'm saying. I would love to say that stuff. <laughs> I would love to say some stuff like putting a point guard up there that people know or some shit, right? Um. But, like, it's hard for me to commit to something like that because I didn't watch anybody like that. Yeah, you know? growing up, yeah. You know, but I am I like Curry at the one. So you got Curry at the one. I would love to have one. a shooter at the one. Yeah. I got Braun at the three. Okay, Braun's at three. Um, 
I'm probably going to put Michael Jordan in my shooting guard. So you got one, two, three right there. Yeah. Steph, I'm gonna Mike, put LeBron. Dirk at four and Shaq at five. Yo, I like Dirk at four as a wild card. Prime Dirk. We got nice. a really good shooting team. Yeah. Like Curry and Dirk are going to get them buckets. Bron's probably going to have to be my rebounder. Cause he's you not said Shaq for five? Score. Yeah, Shaq Which for the Shaq? five. What team? Like, would it be like Lakers? Like Lakers, throwback? most dominant yeah, yeah, Shaq. Yeah, most dominant Shaq. Yeah, for sure. The most dominant Shaq I can get. It would probably be the Lakers Shaq, yeah. Okay, that's, that's nice. Um, you know who slept on? Dwight Howard, Orlando Magic Dwight Howard. He was, bro. He was crazy. That, that was a 2020. For sure. Like, he's averaging literally 2020. For sure. He, was, he wouldn't be in the top five, but. Yeah, he had a few seasons. Good that's seasons. Out, solid. Curry, yep. Jordan, LeBron, Dirk, Shaq. That's all it. I, I would love to put KD in there. I'd love to put Tim Duncan in there. I would love to put some of those guys in there, but no. Okay, that's, that's, <laughs> that's your starting five. Um, what's a secret talent that you have that no one knows about? A secret talent? Secret talent. Like, what, what do you do? Oh, Grayson got some. I, I, don't, I don't know about everything else. Oh, Which okay. is a good question, right? <laughs> he just started giggling like he knew something good. Sometimes <laughs> when I'm on my, uh, like, when I'm recording some of the voiceovers, I'll do, like, a very deep like movie theater voice and play some so you know what i'm talking about like the ea sports that one <laughs> i gotta say it into the mic you gotta do it bro ea sports it's in the game you gotta put the music bed on yo your that was pretty legit um okay um i can juggle oranges no <laughs> for real <laughs> you got four oranges right now Four? Hold on. How many you four? How many you juggle? Two? Only three, bro. It's three? Not a Yo, talent. pass three no, oranges, no, no, man. No, 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, come on, Jay. Yeah, bro. Like, you know, like, I really want to do some voice acting a little bit. I want to get into acting. You definitely have it for that. I would love to. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right, you so know. as you're doing this, answer this question next. All right, I got What's you. What's your dream Dude. collaboration? Dream collab? Yeah. Anyone you in the world. Dev. No, no, I'll stop it. I'll stop it. <laughs> Dream collab? It's impressive. Bro. This sucks because like I can't even like think of one, you know? <laughs> Most people might think that it might be basketball, but is it another creator? <laughs> is it like a movie star, a rapper? Right. Dream collab would have to be a movie with I don't know. Like man. a basketball movie? It's too cliche. <laughs> I want to make a basketball movie one day, though. Yeah, that'd be lit. Um, dream collab. I feel, you got a, I feel like you have a list. You have a few people in your mind. I would like to... I, I like Will Smith. Like, you know, I would like to do like a OG movie with Fresh him Prince. or something. That'd be cool. Um... What about a YouTube collab? Right, that's what I'm trying to think of. Okay. You know? Uh, Who's your favorite creator? Like I said, Casey really inspired me a lot, yeah. but I don't think that's a dream collab. Yeah. And I don't really watch too many people. Um, Would it be like, uh, so like for, for us, as you think about this, for me, it'd be Mr. Beast. Oh, yeah? Just because I, I watch, I consume, there's two people, Mr. Beast, and then probably like doing something with Colin and Samir. Just because like I watch every single piece of content, even Air Rack. It's like another dope Air Rack, yeah. They, I, love, I love the style of their stuff. Yeah, it's fast paced. It's like, it's kind of like, it's what kind you just of like edited, bro, like I showed you. It's like, yeah, yeah. there's like your, your hook, the first five seconds you're hooked. It's like the cool edits with the text. It's like the music that moves you along. And it's like action, action, action. Like, mm -hmm. Some crazy thing happens in between. Yeah. And it's over. Yeah. No, that's good stuff for sure. I'm gonna come back to this question. I can't off think camera. of a dream collab because it's not like I there's I, there's truly nobody out there that I'm like oh like before I'm done with this I have to get a collab with them because I don't think that this like we don't really I don't know that's fair I I would love to like one v one Devin Booker on my channel or something okay well, there you, you go know? that that counts that's as a, a collab, dream collab right there yeah, right? that'd be dope. Or LeBron. Maybe we can set that up. We're gonna do that. Maybe we can set, maybe we can set up a future event with this. Um, <laughs> YouTubers, I'm just gonna say Casey Neistat. Like yeah. if I could create a video with him, and That'd like an I had some creative control over it yeah. too, that would be raw. That's fake. That's I would fake. love to create a nice 10, 15 minute vlog 
or move like one of his old style movies that he used to do. But like I have some creative control and he has some creative yep. control. This is my last question. What's the championship? What, what do you is it? what do you like really want to achieve when this is all said and done? Um I just want like a very Um, like, do you want to be known all over the world? Yeah, for sure. Do you want, like, right. stay positive, friggin' fam, stay motivated to be um, known? Or is it, like, you want your videos to be the best basketball videos? I don't care, like, for... I don't really care, per se, like, the stuff that we're doing now to be known in, f like, 50 years all over because I think it's going to continually change. And, like, as mm -hmm. we grow, it's going to mature a little bit as well, too. Um, I want it to be a production company. Like I want Friga to be a production company, but I also want to, I want to have a league that's like just as big as the NBA. Sick. I want to have I like, like the Friga league. Um, nothing like the big three or the Drew league. Like I want something as big as the NBA. I like that, bro. I'm not going to uncover too much because yeah. we don't want to share everything right now, but that was a great... I'll ask you one question about the Frigga League. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be Frigga League. Or whatever it's like, called. Or whatever just this, throwing it out yeah. there for a name. Like, would I, you envision it being like a, a 1v1, a hoop, like a hoops league, right? Okay. I'm only going to tell you a very, very tiny part of this. <laughs> I'm going to say it here first, all right? Jeez. So, in the league, I want it to uncover. Yeah, you like it. Wow. In the league, I want it to uncover something. <laughs> That, like, what we did for two, three years on YouTube, it was pretty fun. You play these 5v5 games, and then at the end of the day, somehow, there was always somebody that was, like, one of the best basketball players at the park. And I would always end up 1v1ing them full court. Like, right. There were, the crowd would come onto the court. We'd go our side. Yep. They'd get onto the court. Ah! I think in my league, I want there to be a three one v one call out rule during the game. So like in the game, Sick. if you're going at it with somebody, you, you're like you stand on whatever logo or whatever yeah. we have in the court and you call them out. Like at first it was island like we because we have this island gym yep. facility in Falls where I'm from. Um, you call out island, you one v one the person you're going at it with. Both teams get to the court, you cheer on your person, you play to three real quick, really quick oh. game. Like let's okay cool, you want to like, fuck with me like on the court right now? You want to go right now? Like, let's go. I'm calling you out to 1v1. Yeah. 